Hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be doing a very exciting book haul. And I've got to say, this is a pretty large book haul because it's been a while since the last time that I made a book haul video. I want to say it's been at least like six weeks. And so in the last, you know, month and a half or maybe even two months, I've collected so many books. I've received so many amazing books from publishers and I've also just bought a lot of books. And so I'm so excited to let you know about all of the books. But before we do jump into today's video, I just wanted to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is Factor because Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. They have a team of gourmet chefs who help create every single meal and they only use ingredients with integrity so that you can be feeling your best all day long. I think Factor makes it so easy to skip the stress of meal planning, especially during the holiday season, because I don't know about you, but once the sun starts going down a little bit earlier like it is now, I like lose all my motivation to want to cook or to do anything. Like literally my energy is just zapped. If you're too busy, but you want to make sure that you're still eating well and getting a nutritious meal, I think Factor could be the perfect solution because you can skip that extra trip to the grocery store. You can skip all of the preparation that it takes for dinner. You can skip the cleanup and you still get the flavor and the nutrition and the quality that you're looking for. And Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. You just throw that thing in the microwave for two minutes and you have a fresh and warm meal ready to go. And I love that with Factor, you have over 35 plus weekly options to choose from when it comes to these meals so you're never going to be stuck eating the same things over and over again even though I do have some favorites that I love to order every time. That sun-dried chicken and tomato is one of my favorite meals from Factor. I want to get it every single time because it's so good. I think Factor especially helps with my busy schedule because usually in the middle of the day if I'm working and filming and editing the last thing that I want to do is like sit there and try to figure out what to make for lunch and that's why I think Factor is the perfect solution for lunch or for dinner if you just need something quick but you want to keep the workflow going. So you can head to factor75.com or use the link in my description and use my code GABBYREADS50 to get 50% off your first box. What an incredible deal. You use the link in my description or go to factor75.com. You use my code GABBYREADS50 to get 50% off your first box. That's half off. That's incredible. Thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into the book haul. All right, so jumping into the book haul, I thought I would show you some romance books that I've recently hauled. Berkeley Romance recently sent me two books that they've recently published. The first one is Iris Kelly Doesn't Date by Ashley Herring Blake. Oh my gosh, look at the way that this matches my sweater. Like, are you serious? This one is a female-female romance that I am very excited to read. I actually think this one is the third book in a series. I don't think you like have to read them as a part of a series, but this is the third book that follows like the same set of characters. This one on the back says, a fake relationship after a horrible one-night stand is anything but an act in this witty and heartfelt romantic comedy. This is one that I'm actually very excited to read. I think I'm planning to read this one a little bit later this month, so hopefully I can get around to it. They also say, do Your Worst by Rosie Dannon. This one looks so freaking cute. Rosie Dannon is actually the same author as The Roommate, which is one of my favorite romance books. And this one says, sparks fly when an occult expert and a disgraced archaeologist become enemies with benefits in this steamy romance. Our main character's name is Riley Rhodes. I love the alliteration. I don't know, it sounds like this one's gonna have great vibes because it says she is hired to break the curse on an infamous Scottish castle. So like it takes place in Scotland, I think. And then it says the love interest, he tries to get her fired and that's why they have like beef between them. And dude, the love interest, his name is Clark. Edgeware? Like, what are these names? I love it. I love it. It's so dramatic. I can't wait to read this one. I'm actually considering reading this one during winter ween, maybe? Because it has a W in the title and it just kind of looks like it would fit the vibes. So like, I don't know, but I'm really excited to read this one. And then St. Martin's Griffin also sent me two romance books. The first one is going to be Cleat Cute by Meryl Wilsner. I actually recently just read this one for a reading vlog and sadly this one didn't really end up working out for me, but this one is a female-female romance that involves soccer. It involves these two players named Grace and then Phoebe. Grace is the one that has been on this team for like 10 plus years like she's been playing soccer professionally literally forever And then Phoebe is like a new transfer like she gets transferred onto her team and Phoebe has always idolized Grace And so it's very interesting. There's a little bit of an age gap, but it's only about four years And then they also sent me love interest by Claire Gilmore and this one sounds like it's gonna be incredible I'm also kind of obsessed with the colors with like the purple the yellow and then this like almost like aquamarine blue. Like, I don't know what's going on in here, but I love the colors. I don't know, this one almost gives me like the hating game energy because we're following these two characters who work in the same office and I think they're trying to get the same position. They both work at a magazine in Manhattan, so it takes place in New York, which is one of the main reasons why I was intrigued by this one. But it says she's passed over for the job in favor of the board chairman's son. 
and his name is Alex Harrison. It says the two are thrown together on the same project. What they discover about their company might change everything, including the dreams each of them is chasing in their mutual love interest. I don't know if it's like a hate to love situation. I think it is because they're both like competing for the same job, I think is what's happening, which gives me the hating game vibes, which means that I want to read this. And then Berkeley recently sent Good Girls Don't Die by Christina Henry, and this is one that I could not be more excited about. Christina Henry is actually the same author as Near the Bone, which is a horror book that I am absolutely obsessed with. On the back of the book here, it just says a sharp-edged, supremely twisty thriller about three women who find themselves trapped inside stories they know aren't their own. Like, what does that even mean? What do you mean, Christina Henry? And it says getting lost in a story can be deadly. I was just recently talking about how I love books that are about books. I'm hoping that I can read this book this month, but if not, I'll probably try to get to this before the end of the year. Like, I really want to read this one soon. It sounds so good. And then Atria Books also sent me two books that I'm pretty excited about. The first one is Expiration Dates by Rebecca Surley. I was trying to look. I think this one publishes on March 5th next year, which honestly, it seems so far away right now, but March is going to be here before we know it. And Rebecca Surley is the author of In Five Years, which is a book that I am an absolute sucker for that shit. I loved that book. I don't know why. I just loved it. The premise of this one is the most intriguing thing that I've read in a long time. Okay, listen to this. It says Daphne Bell believes the universe has a plan for her. I love the name Daphne, by the way. I feel like that's not used a lot in books and I just love it. It's great. Anyways, it says every time she meets a new man, she receives a slip of paper with his name and a number on it. The exact amount of time they will be together. The papers told her she'd spend three days with Martin in Paris, five weeks with Noah in San Francisco, and three months with Hugo, her ex-boyfriend turned best friend. She's been receiving the numbered papers for over 20 years, always wondering when there might be one without an expiration date. Finally, the night of a blind date at her favorite Los Angeles restaurant, there's only a name, Jake. Oh my god, doesn't this sound like that one episode of Black Mirror, like the Hang the DJ, where like there's an expiration date on their relationships and like they know the relationship's gonna expire. Like that sounds crazy. I'm so excited for this one. Ah, oh, I think I'm gonna read this one in December. I think I've decided. And then Atria also sent me another arc for a book that's coming out in March next year, on March 19th, that's called Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Kovna. And this is the same author as that book 13 that I read a while ago now. I think it was called 13. And I don't know too much about this one because this is one that I didn't personally request from the publisher. Like they just sent it my way. But this one says, one dark evening on New York City's Upper West Side, two strangers meet by chance. Which, oh my gosh, right there already, New York City. Like I'm here. And it says these two women meet. They realize they have a lot in common. They want to get revenge against the men who destroyed their families. As they talk into the night, they come up with the perfect plan. If you kill for me, I'll kill for you. Oh, oh my gosh, this has one of my favorite tropes. Two strangers meet and then they make a plan to like help kill for each other because since they aren't linked in any way, it wouldn't make any sense for them to like kill random people. Oh my gosh, I love that. So very excited for this one. I also noticed that it's blurbed by Ruth Ware and it's blurbed by Alex Michaelitis on the back. Okay, and then next up, Hatchet ended up sending me one book and it is The Apology by Jimin Han. And this one is a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but it just sounded like something that I could enjoy, so I just decided to go for it. This one, it says, in South Korea, a 105-year-old woman receives a letter. Ten days later, she has been thrust into the afterlife, fighting to head off a curse that will otherwise devastate generations to come. So, like, genre-wise, I have no idea what to expect with this. I'm thinking it's gonna be more, like, literary fiction and even, like, magical realism kind of vibe. But it says, part ghost story and part family epic, the apology is a tale of sisterhood reaching back to the days of Japanese colonialism and the Korean War and told it through the singular voice of a defiant, funny, and unforgettable centenarian. So like, I don't know what to expect with this. It just sounded like something I might be into. So I decided to pick it up. But if you've read it, I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. And then, oh my gosh, okay, Penguin Random House sent me a lot of books this month that I'm gonna go through. For example, Out There Screaming by Jordan Peele. This is the uh, anthology of new black horror that Jordan Peele put together. Jordan Peele is a director, by the way, if you didn't know. He's a director of some really classic movies like Get Out, Us, and Nope. And this is a collection of 20 different short stories that he put together. Jordan Peele didn't actually write anything himself in this, but all 20 stories are from black authors that are writing in the horror genre. And I did end up vlogging my experience reading this book in a Patreon exclusive reading vlog that I made last month. But I ended up finding this collection to be just okay. I definitely found a few new favorites that I really enjoyed, but for the most part, I found myself a little bit underwhelmed by most of the stories in this collection, which is a little bit of a bummer. They also sent me a copy of Black River 
Orchard by Chuck Wendig, which this is a horror book that I did end up reading last month. Chuck Wendig is one of those horror authors where he has like books that are really long. Like this one's over 600 pages. And usually I'd be like, ew, like why bother? Like I don't want to read that. But for some reason, uh, Chuck Wendig's books, I just love the way that he writes his books. I feel like he's very comparable to like Stephen King with the way that he writes. And in this story, we're just following the small town where there's like a magical apple tree, apple farm, apple orchard where people can eat these apples and it helps to kind of like change their lives and it's really crazy and really weird and I just loved it so much. And then Random House actually sent me a finished copy of The Night House by Joe Nesbo, which was very kind of them. However, I read an arc of this during Summerween and I personally gave it one star, which is truly unfortunate because I really wanted to love this. So I will be passing on this copy to a friend. They also sent A Winter in New York by Josie Silver, which I wasn't sure if Josie Silver was an author that I still wanted to continue reading after not really enjoying her last book. This one just looked so cute and it's a winter in New York. Like, hello, anything with New York vibes, I'm like immediately like sign me the fuck up, like let's go. And this one just sounds especially cute because it says we follow a young chef who stumbles upon a secret family recipe that might lead her to the love and life she's been looking for. I'm not usually somebody who reads a lot of like Christmas kind of books around Christmas time, but I was thinking this year maybe it would be fun to do a vlog like that where I read some like Christmassy kind of books, so I might have to include this one in an upcoming vlog like that. So let me know if that's something you would want to see from me. They also sent me two books that are kind of like backlist books. Um, One of them is going to be The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn, and look at how small this is. I'm so excited about this because I actually read this book a number of years ago now. This is only 62 pages, and I read this book back when it first came out, but I haven't read it since, and I don't remember too much about it. I think I gave it like four stars the first time that I read this. So I was kind of thinking maybe I would reread this book either this month or next month because I thought it would be fun to reread it. And this copy is just so cute and so small. I can't even take it. And then they also sent, um, as part of their backlist, they sent The Library at Mount Char, which this is a book that I've been curious about for a long time. I don't know if this would actually end up being my thing or not, but they had it as an option. So I was like, why not? Let's give it a go. This is another one of those books that are about books, I think, which is one of the things that interests me about it. It says we follow a character who knows that she's a little bit odd, but she figures that's only natural when she's spent her life locked away in an infinite library. I was just reading on the back here that it says that this is a fantasy debut. How did I miss that? I don't know why for some reason I was thinking that this was going to be more of like either literary fiction or like mystery thriller, but I was not expecting it to say fantasy because it says we get the point of view of an iceberg and a lion named after an atomic bomb. Wow, what the heck? I had no idea. So let me know your thoughts on this one and if you think it's something that I could enjoy. And then the last two books that, that Penguin Random House sent include The Unmaking of June Faro by Adrian Young. And this is actually from the same author as Spells for Forgetting. I don't think it's a part of the same series, but it kind of looks similar. This is another book that I don't really know if this would be my thing or not because I think this one also leans a little bit into fantasy, but I thought I would give it a shot anyways. It says a woman risks everything to end her family's centuries-old curse, solve her mother's disappearance, and find love in this mesmerizing novel. So it sounds like we are going to have a little bit of romance in here as well. It says it takes place in the small mountain town of Jasper, North Carolina. I love the name June Faro. Like, I don't know why. I love it. And then lastly, Penguin Random House sent me Same Bed, Different Dreams by Ed Park. And this one, oh my gosh, isn't this cover so freaking cool? This is yet another one that might be a little bit out of my comfort zone, but it sounded so cool that I couldn't pass up on this reason why I think this one's a little bit out of my comfort zone is because I think this is not only historical fiction, but I think it's also sci-fi. Because if you can see on the cover here, this is like the historical fiction, like it's back in the day. And then this is like sci-fi, like there's like space and planets and shit. And I think this is like a little astronaut, I don't really know. But this one, I think the story partially takes place in the year 1919, which would definitely make this pretty historical. And I think this also has to do possibly with like alternate realities. I think that's why I was interested in this to begin with. It does say same bed, different dreams is a funny feature of imagination and a thrilling meld of history and fiction that pulls readers into to another dimension, one in which utopia is possible. Okay, and then I have a few books that I was so kindly sent or gifted from friends this month. The first one is My Roommate is a Vampire, which was sent to me off my Amazon wish 
wishlist by Amy. So thank you so much to Amy for sending me this. It was perfectly timed when she sent me this because I really wanted to read this romance in the month of October because it's about vampires. And so I did read this one in the month of October. And in this story, we're following this girl named Cassie who's going to be moving into this apartment with a vampire, but she doesn't know he's a vampire. This romance is one that I really wanted to love, but unfortunately, I think I ended up giving this one around two stars. Like I just didn't really, this one just didn't really work for me personally. Thank you so much to Amy for sending me a copy of this one. I'm so glad that I got the opportunity to read this one. And then, oh my gosh, Bethany ended up sending me two books off my Amazon wish list. One of them include The Hollow Kind by Andy Davidson. And this is one that I've been so curious about. This one is a horror book that I've been hearing some really great things. This one says, this is a jaw dropping, terrifying novel about legacy and the nightmares hidden in family stories. It says, this is a twisted tale of cosmic horror mixed with a stunning Southern Gothic fable that will haunt you long after you turn the final page. This sounds like it's gonna be so cool. I've heard a lot of really great things about this one. I know my friend Jesse over from Jesse on YouTube. I know they really love this one and they've been highly recommending it to me. So I'm really curious to check this one out. I hope that I can read this one soon, like hopefully before the end of the year. And then also Bethany sent me this one called Found, an anthology of found footage horror stories. I don't know why on the cover it doesn't say that it actually says memorize video cassette something on the front because this is made to look like a VHS tape, which I just think looks really cool. Like I love the design of this book. And this one says it has 18 stories in it and they're all related to found footage, which I think is really fun. And I was looking through in the back the list of all the authors that are featured in this collection and I don't know if I've read from any of them. I do recognize some of their names. Oh, okay. I do recognize the name Clay McCloyd Chapman. I actually just read a book of his pretty recently. And then I also do recognize the name Allie Wilkes. So like there are a few horror authors in this collection that I have read from before, but I'm so curious to be able to try so many new horror authors. And I do love the found footage horror trope. So I'm really curious to check this one out. I haven't really been hearing too many people talk about this one, but I'm so curious to read it. So thank you so much to Bethany for sending me these. I can't wait. And then also, as I mentioned before, before, my lovely real life friend Katie ended up gifting me her copy of Fourth Wing because she was going to end up getting a second copy and so that's how I was able to get my hands on this book. So thank you so much to my friend Katie for giving me this one. I actually do have an entire reading vlog that I just posted recently where I read this one so I will have that link down below if you would like to hear my thoughts on this book. And then before we do jump into all of the books that I bought for myself in the last six weeks or so, I would like to show you a quick little library haul because I always like to put the reminder in here that your local library is there and is so useful and I read so many books from the library every single month. But one of the books I recently just got from my library is Monstrulio. This is a book that I actually just finished reading. I actually just finished reading this one yesterday, but I'm going to be reading this for an upcoming reading vlog that I'm working on and this one is a horror book. We follow this mother who after her young son passes away, she cuts out a piece of his lung and then the lung ends up growing and kind of turning into what might be a little monster. It's kind of terrifying. So I'm super grateful to my library so that I was able to read this one this month. I also recently got some manga from my library, like this one called Solonin. I don't know too much about this, but I have read from this author before, so I'm curious to give this one a shot. And then I also got I Think Our Son is Gay, Volume 1. This is another manga that I've had my eye on for a while that I just thought looked so cute, so I decided to check it out. And then I also recently just started reading this new manga series that I got from my library called Donuts Under a Crescent Moon. I actually found out about this series because on my last wrap-up that I posted, someone was so kind enough to comment a bunch of recommendations for female female romance mangas because I think I had mentioned how I'd never read any before and this was one of the ones they recommended and luckily my library had a ton of volumes of it so I've been reading this series I'm only too deep right now but it is so freaking cute I highly recommend if you're looking for some female female like sapphic manga it's so cute all right and then on to all of the books that I bought for myself this month it's this whole stack like can you believe it all right the first thing is going to be from book of the month I actually went a little bit crazy last month with my book of the month and I added four books to my box because I'm insane I ended up getting Starling House by Alex E. Haro, which is a book that I just recently read for a vlog. This one's more of a like gothic fantasy romance kind of book. It's a little bit outside of my comfort zone. I thought it was just okay. Also ended up getting Stars in Your Eyes by Case and Calendar, and this one is a male male romance that ended up being one of my favorite romances. Like it was so freaking good, so beautiful. They're both actors, and one of them has a bad reputation, so they have to like fake date in order to like get approval from the public for their movie. Oh my gosh, it is just so freaking top tier, and it's a lot more heavy and beautiful than I was originally anticipating that it would be. I also ended up getting My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon. I did read this one earlier this month in a reading vlog and unfortunately
unfortunately it did not really work for me very well but this is the new horror book from Jennifer McMahon and then I also added Shark Heart a love story I'm so glad that I decided to read this one because this book just launched itself to the very tip top of my favorite books that I've read this year the premise of this one sounds absolutely crazy it sounds crazy when I try to explain it to you but it's kind of like a literary fiction kind of writing style in this book and we follow this married couple who like shortly after they get married they find out that you know the husband in this couple he's slowly turning into a great white shark and in this book they live in a universe where it's like kind of normal I mean not super normal but it's like a thing like if you get cancer it's like an illness you can get where you start to mutate into an animal of some kind and this book was crazy it was so beautifully written it was so freaking stunning I cried so much reading this I loved it like top of the year favorite so I'm glad that I got this one I also ended up purchasing Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. I bought this one because it is my book club pick for the book troupe for the month of November, so we will be reading this one, and I think I just discussed with Elias very recently that the live show is going to be happening on the last day of November, on November 30th in the afternoon in Pacific time, so I'm very excited to read this one. Ashley Winstead is an author that I just absolutely love because of In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, so I'm hoping that I love this one as well. I'll be reading this one very soon. I also ended up picking up a copy of Yellow Face by R.F. Kwan and this is another one that I'm gonna be reading this one very soon for a reading vlog. I'll probably have this one read and posted before the end of this month, so you'll be hearing my thoughts about this one very soon. But this one is just about this woman who has this best friend, or she has like this colleague that's this Asian woman, and the Asian woman dies, and her white friend like steals her book and publishes it herself. That's all I know about it. I'm so excited to read this one. In the month of October, I ended up doing a video where I read your horror recommendations, and I did end up purchasing a few different books for that video, including including Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle and then also Burn the Negative by Josh Winning. These were two books that I ended up enjoying quite a bit actually. I think they were my favorite two books that I read for that video so pretty cool that I decided to pick up these. And Camp Damascus is a universe where there's this gay conversion camp that's called Camp Damascus and it's like the most effective gay conversion camp in the country and it is very scary and terrifying. And then Burn the Negative is a horror book that's kind of about this like cult classic 90s movie where like a lot of the cast died and it's really creepy and now they're trying to reboot the movie into a TV show. And it was just a really interesting book. I actually really liked this one too. I thought it was really creepy. The ending kind of fell apart for me a little bit, but for the most part, it was a fun time. I also recently bought some more manga. I did buy Alice in Borderland Volume 5, which it's unfortunate that this volume in particular, I wasn't the biggest fan of, but I am excited to own more of the series because I don't own any of the Alice in Borderland series yet. I've been reading all of them from my library, but this one I do own. And then I also ended up getting The Golden Sheep. I forgot to mention this one in my last book haul because I actually did get this book in the summer like a little while ago. I did end up reading this one and I wasn't the biggest fan of it so I don't know if I'm going to continue to keep this one but it just looks so cute so for now it is staying on my bookshelves but this is another one that I hauled. I also recently got The Outsider by Stephen King. I picked this one up at Barnes & Noble because they were having one of those like 50% off paperback kind of sales and so I just decided to go for it even though I don't know like when or if I plan to read this one anytime soon. I would like to do an entire reading vlog dedicated to this book if I do decide to pick it up. I know like a lot of people say you have to read the Mr. Mercedes trilogy before reading this book, but I DNF'd Mr. Mercedes and I don't think I have any interest in reading the Mr. Mercedes series, so I'm totally fine with spoiling myself if that's the case. But you'll have to let me know your thoughts on The Outsider and if you think it would be something that I would enjoy. I also recently made a visit to my local bookstore that has the ARC shelf, and this ARC shelf is pretty famous. I talk about it all the time in my videos, but basically you just make a donation to the bookstore and you can get some ARCs off of their ARC bookshelves because the bookstore gets a lot of arcs and then like they don't know what to do with them so they just have them down there and the two arcs that I ended up picking up include The Leftover Woman and then also The Unsettled and The Leftover Woman is a recent thriller that I've been curious about I've been hearing good things it actually just got nominated at the freaking Goodreads Choice Awards so I was like oh cool and this one just says an evocative family drama and a riveting mystery about the ferocious pool of motherhood for two very different women and this one takes place in New York City so like I'm there I'm here I can't wait to read it I've been hearing good things about this one so far and then I also picked up The Unsettled. This is one that I really thought this was horror, but I don't know if it's horror. I think it's more like literary fiction, but it says this is a searing multi-generational novel that's set in the 80s in racially and politically turbulent Philadelphia and in the tiny town of Bonaparte, Alabama, about a mother fighting for her sanity and survival. I don't know, this one just sounds really interesting. I keep seeing this one every time I go to the bookstore and I'm like, that cover is absolutely stunning. So I just decided to grab a copy of this one. I also recently 
recently bought a copy of The Devil of Nanking because this is one that I was originally going to try to read in like September and October. I was going to try to read this book for the video that I was doing of reading your thriller recommendations and then I was going to try to do it for the video of reading your horror recommendations. I wasn't really sure where this one fell genre wise but I actually did end up reading most of this book uh, during my Screaming Color readathon with the red on the cover and I actually DNF'd this one about like 150 pages in or so because I just wasn't a huge fan of the writing style in this book. It was kind of boring me a little bit but also because I could kind of get a grasp on where this book was going and I looked up spoilers and I don't want, I don't think I could do it. I don't think this is the book for me so I think I'm probably going to be unhauling this one soon. And then two of my favorite books that I read this year that I ended up buying pretty recently include The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston as well as Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. The Seven Year Slip is probably one of my favorite romance books that I've read this year and this one has a little bit of a sci-fi kind of twist on it because we follow this character who moves into her aunt's kind of like magical apartment and in that apartment there's this guy who's existing there but he's living seven years in the past and then she's in the present day and it's messy and it's chaotic and it's beautiful and I love this book so much. And then I also recently picked up a copy of Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. This book actually just published on Halloween. My Barnes & Noble had it a few days early so I was able to read it at the very end of October and I loved this. This is kind of like a vampire horror novel that takes place in New York. It ticks a lot of boxes for me. We're following this couple who have recently had a baby and the wife, Anna, is having a very hard time with postpartum depression and not really feeling like herself and they end up winning the housing lottery in New York and they move into this really fancy building but then some creepy things start happening like some vampire-ish things and this book is very, you know, reminiscent of Salem's Law or like Rosemary's Baby. It has all of those vibes and it was top tier for me. This was five stars. It's one of my favorite books that I've read this year. So that's amazing. I'm glad that I have this copy. So yeah, those are all of the books that I have hauled in the last six weeks or so. I know, like I said, it's a lot. I have a problem. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out. You'll have to let me know if you've read any of these books. What are your thoughts on them? Which books do you think I should prioritize reading sooner than later? And thank you so much for being here. I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye.